Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina joins us now. Senator, you have promised. I want to go to this Lisa Page. A lot of credit to Congressman right. Collins in, of Georgia. Mm -hmm. right. Last week, we got the Orr testimony. This week, right. we got the Page. We have all of that, 302s, Gang of Eight, and the mm -hmm. FISA warrants themselves. My question to you right. is simple. You Now do we have to, based on what Lisa Page said, do we now have to go back right to Hillary Clinton if, in fact, the DOJ rigged that from the get-go? Yeah, there's two questions I think the public deserves an answer to. Did they short-circuit the Clinton email investigation because they wanted her to win and they knew if they charged her she might lose? Did they start the Russian investigation against Trump as an insurance policy in case he did win? Those are the two questions that I'll try to get you answers to. Well, it also, uh, where's Michael Horowitz? Where's John Uber? Because we're also okay. waiting for them. Right. There's three people going to look at this. Horowitz is going to look at the FISA abuse. Did the DOJ corruptly get a warrant against an American citizen, Carter Page? I think they corruptly got a warrant against Carter Page, and that should scare every American. You've got the Utah U.S. attorney acting as a quasi Mueller when it comes to all things DOJ, FBI. I think we need a special counsel to look at the potential crimes by the Department of Justice, the FBI, regarding the Clinton email investigation and the Russian investigation against Trump early on. The point is, the Congress, me, not going to happen in the House. We're going to call them all before the committee. Did they try to invoke the 25th Amendment? to take the president down? Did they get a warrant against an American citizen using information they know was flawed? Did they tank the Clinton email investigation because they're afraid that if they indicted her, she would lose an election they wanted her to win? You're going to get answers to that the best I can give them to you. Senator, this now was brought to an even higher level, what was released yesterday. That is right into the Attorney General Loretta Lynch's yes. office. Um, does she, do we need her text? Her emails, does she need to be put under oath? And more importantly, what information did she give to the former president of the United States? What did Obama know, and when did he know it as to all of this? Here's the question I've got. Why would you decide not to charge her before you even talk to her? The point is, it seems to me they, they were going to make sure it didn't go too far that the Department of Justice under Loretta Lynch was never going to let this email investigation go too far. Before they even talked to her, apparently they decided not to charge her. And when they did talk to her, they talked to her without being under oath. They gave a lot of people immunity in the Clinton email investigation uh, for no good reason. So here's what I think happened. I think the Clinton email investigation was short-circuited because they did not want to compromise her ability to win an election. They hated Trump's guts. They started the uh, beginning of the Russian investigation before he won as an insurance policy in case he well, did win. Here's, here's another problem. This is why releasing the FISAs, the 302s, Gang of Eights, which I believe, I mean, I don't know why the president hasn't signed off. I guess that probably he will might. be forthcoming. I, I hope he does. But here's the interesting part. In Bruce Orr's testimony last week, we, we thought we knew, now we know. Bruce Orr said he warned everybody in exactly. August of 2016. Hillary paid for it. It's tainted. Nobody's verified it. Nobody's corroborated it. Christopher Steele hates Donald Trump and has an agenda. And the thing is, <laughs> Christopher Steele, if anyone said they verified it, we know it's not true because Steele, in an interrogatory in Great Britain, he said he didn't know if it was true himself. So they couldn't well, have verified it, but they used it for FISA warrants. It, it goes a little deeper than that. So Bruce Orr is telling the head of the investigation, McCabe and others, you can't rely on this dossier because the guy who created it hates Trump. He's got a political agenda, right? So with that knowledge, they asked for a warrant four different occasions against Carter Page, and here's what McCabe said. Without the dossier, we'd never gotten the warrant. Mm -hmm. They wow. show the McCabe dossier. McCabe said that. McCabe, McCabe said, said, that. said that. But it gets worse. After Trump wins, Comey gives him a copy of the dossier saying, right. I want you to know this is out there. We can't verify any of it, but I just want you to know about it. It's the same document Whoa. they gave to the court under oath. Wait a minute. So Comey signed that. Comey signed off on the dossier and the and the exactly. warrant in October 2016. 
before Donald Trump sworn in in January 2017. Well, it's salacious, but it's unverified. James Comey, uh, you have a right how to remain silent. How could that silent. be? How could you tell the court it's exactly. reliable and tell the president, well, we don't know if it's true or not? Because they were setting them up. Because the they were maybe setting him up. <laughs> That's right. All right. Uh, thank you, Senator.